Okay, so we're, we're about to start then. Welcome to the, the training webinar this evening. As you can see there, tonight the subject is supporting your new team members. And um, this is one of a series of eight that I run. I uh, try and run it every Wednesday night, although I missed it last week. Occasionally uh, life gets in the way. Um, but uh, hopefully we're, we, this should take about eight or nine weeks and we go around and then when we get to number eight the following week we start all over again with number one. Um, I also record all of these, so we're, we're recording this one. And so if you're at the point in your business, if you're just starting, for example, and you really would, could do with the, the getting started or your first four weeks there, numbers one and two, at the end of this webinar, I'll explain how to get to all of the recordings so you can always go back and watch those. Or indeed, go, go back over this one if there was something in it that you wanted to go back over in your own time. So um, I'll explain uh, how you get to all of that in a moment. But as you can see there, number five today, supporting your new team members. And what we're going to be covering is um, understanding a bit about the numbers. You'll, you'll hear a lot in Clean Easy Training that it's a numbers game. Um, but uh, what can you do to try to, um, when you do get a new start, to support them to the best of your ability and give them the best possible start? So we're going to cover you know, their first seven days. It's really, really important. Um, anticipating some early problems that most new distributors will, will come across at some point, helping them keep track of their start, then getting them along to their first meeting, and um, I really recommend that everybody, if you're doing some team building, you have a little checklist, trying to remember everything that you need to do with a new starter, especially if you're new at team building yourself, can be, um, can be a challenge. And I've got a checklist that I go through, and it just makes it a lot easier when you have a new starter just to make sure you remember you've been to everything with them. So we'll go through that now. Um, so normally you start off here when you've just recruited a new team member. And if this is your first team member, this is where the business gets really exciting. But it's also where all of the hard work begins. And uh, this is very, very true. Your success in Clean Easy will be in direct proportion to the amount of frustration you can deal with. You'll find that whether you're team building at the moment and don't yet have any team members or when you get new team members. Um, it, it's very much a people business and you might be really enthusiastic and determined and work really hard at your business and your team member may not be quite as enthusiastic as you and might be a bit disappointed. And it's very easy to get frustrated but you'll be successful if you can just deal with that and kind of move on, support them, move on to the next one and so on. Remember, you only need five serious people to build a huge, clean, easy business. If you understand the way that the business works and you've got five people who themselves are really keen on team building, so they get to gold, that puts you at senior executive, and you're probably talking at three, four, five thousand pounds a month income from there. And you, you know, you really don't need more than that because those, can, those five people can go on to get to bronze exec which will take you up to premier level and so on. So, as I say, it, 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 some people sort of think, oh, you have to bring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in to build a, a really big business. You might have to go through a large number of people, but you only need five serious ones to build a really big business. So, when somebody joins your team, what's the best aftercare and support you can offer them? And this is the biggest impact that you can have on the success on your, of your new team member. Now, one thing it's important to realise is, although you can have this impact on them, the, the, the biggest impact on their success is their own attitude and determination. If you've got someone who's really kind of, you know, can't be bothered, gets put off easily, doesn't like going out in the bag weather, doesn't like going out of their comfort zone, then there's a limit to what you can do to make them successful. And so it's really important to understand that as you're bringing people into your team, many of them will leave. You, know, you, you won't find your five serious people as the first five people that you recruit into the business. But all that you can say to yourself, if somebody does leave, did you do everything you could to support them? I'm amazed at the number of people that join, that join my team. I had a couple just fairly recently who have been in Clean Easy in the past, you know, sort of four, five, six, seven, ten, in one case, almost 20 years ago. Um, and they sort of said, I, uh, one of the reasons they left was they, they felt pretty much on their own. They didn't get very much support. They, you know, in half the case, they, just, they had no idea who their upline was. 
Um, and so, if you've got somebody leave your team and you haven't tried to contact them, you haven't sent them any information, you haven't spoken to them, you haven't emailed them, invited them to meetings, and they leave, then really you've only got yourself to blame. And hopefully, what I'll teach you um, or go through with you this evening will uh, put you in, uh, in good stead for supporting your team members. So the first thing to do is keeping in touch. A little phrase there that I've, I've heard that I, I do believe in. Constant communication keeps people inspired. Um, and what you will find is that your leaders in your team will contact you. So initially, you might find that you're ringing people up and asking how things are going. Did the catalogs arrive okay? Um, do you need any help putting them together? Did you get your day slips? All those sorts of things. But what you will often find is that the, the leaders in there would be ringing you up saying, oh, I just want to let you know the catalogues have arrived. Um, I packed them all up. Um, I'm planning to put them out tomorrow morning. Do you think 7 in the morning is a bit early to do that? And you can immediately tell that they're one of these people that just get on and do it. Oh, hi, Amanda and Andrew. Thanks for that. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same for everybody. Is everyone else struggling with the audio here, or can you hear me all okay? I'll, I'll persevere. It may be that... Um, if, if there are some bits that you're missing, hopefully it'll be recorded on the uh, the recording that I do, and it's just the internet links that are, that are not brilliant. So I apologise for that. Um, but yes, as I was saying there, yeah, what you should find is the leaders in your team will be the ones that contact you regularly. So quick question for everybody: um, If you have a new starter in their first seven days, approximately how many times would you call them in that first week? Any guesses? Can you remember when you first started, how often your sponsor spoke to you? A couple of times, okay. Yeah, daily from Susan. Every day, Ash, yeah. Um, in my opinion, you should try to call them every day. Now, it may be that you don't necessarily have something to say to them every day, but what you're trying to do you just show them that you're there and if they do have any problems at all in any stage and in the first seven days they like to have lots of questions you're always there for them and the call might just be you know is everything okay did the catalogs arrive and um, have you thought about when you might put them out just a little kind of two minute conversation just so that they, you're starting to build that rapport with them as I said there you're building a bit of rapport you're showing them that you're there for them. If they ever need you, you know, they can call you, text you, email you, however they want to, and you're showing them that you care about them. And it also gives you the opportunity to answer any questions they might have. Um, and as I said there, showing them that you're always there for them. So, what might you say? Because you might sort of think, oh, crikey, what, what can you say to somebody if you ring them up every single day? So, what I'll do is I'll just briefly go through what I say when I've got a new starter. Oh, excuse me, I'm just... Um, Struggling with a cup of tea here. Um, so the first day, I normally, this is before they'll have received the catalogue, so we do the sign-up. Um, obviously, depending on if it's a Friday, the catalogues might not be there till the Tuesday, but the first day after they do the sign-up, I just ring them up and say, I just want to let you know, I've just sent you a little information pack. I, I send a welcome letter out to all my team members. Um, and the catalogue should be coming tomorrow. Have you got any questions at the moment? And mostly they haven't, because you know they, they haven't kind of, that they're waiting for their catalogues really but it just you know if, if anything does crop up it gives them the opportunity to ask you there um, on day two what I normally do is in, in the the letter that I'd sent them the information pack I have a little getting started checklist which just points them at some reading and um, things to do when the catalogues arrive that sort of thing but it's also at this point where I ask them what are you what did you join clean easy for what are you looking to get out of it because most people join Clean Easy for, you know, initially an extra £50 a week just to help pay off a debt or pay off um, a credit card or treat the kids to a pizza or whatever it might be. But some people um, will join and they really want to get into the team building straight away. They're working full time. What they're looking to do is build a residual income so they can retire early, for example. And it's really important that you understand that and you go through that with them because then there's no point in spending a lot of time on team building training for somebody who really at the moment isn't ready for that and they just want to learn how to do their catalogues. So that, on the second day, that's normally what I go um, through that with them. On, on day three, I would normally check by then everything should have arrived. So they should have their catalogues, the, the day slips, the plastic bags, the, 
the round books and everything. And I just sort of go through that with them, explain what's you know what's in the boxes and. Um, on the getting started checklist that I mentioned earlier, and I, this is in a welcome letter that I send them, but we, I also have like a team website and it's on there. It explains to them how to um, put the uh, information on the, um, um, you know, on the catalogs, how to get the catalogs ready and everything. So, um, so I just sort of checked that with them. Are, are you ready? Any idea when you're likely to put the catalogs out? Um, just so again, get, getting them thinking about what they're doing with with their new business, and then on day four, it's normally just a, how is it going, you know? And it might just be that by then they've just got all their catalogs ready and they're planning to put them out that day, or maybe they've already delivered some catalogs. And what, however they've done at that point, I always congratulate them and just sort of say, oh, well done, you know. It's you know, even if they've just managed to get fifty catalogs out, if someone's really busy and they've got their kids and you know, in between the school run, they manage to just nip out and do. Their, their road or something like that. You know, that first step is so important. So it, it's really important to you know congratulate them, say well done, and um, on what whatever they've achieved so far. Um, day five is often just. Uh, you know, did you have any questions when you were putting your catalogs out or something like that? Um, anything I can help with so far? Um, day six might be you know if they if they had their catalogs collected back in again. How did that go? And explaining a bit about you know what to do with an order, would they like some help putting an order in if they've got enough, that sort of thing. Um, and then day seven, I mean it wouldn't be day seven then, but you know if they had put an order in on day six, then day eight or nine or ten or something like that, when their first order arrives, again I ring them up just to explain and um, you know check if, if everything arrived okay in the box, whether any queries they had, that sort of thing. So. You can kind of see there. I wouldn't say this is a, a, you know, a, a checklist that you have to follow exactly, but the, the point is just in their first few days, you, it's important to let them know that you're there for them. If they have any questions at all, you're there to help them, so that they don't feel uncomfortable ringing you, because you've shown them that you're happy to talk to them and keep in touch regularly. Okay, uh, what else do we need to do at the beginning? It's important to um, anticipate and eliminate early errors. So th little things like in their first four weeks, if they didn't do it uh, with the new sign-up process, they can do it at the time they do the sign-up. If they didn't do it then, then make sure they send their photo in for their uh, ID card during their first few days. Uh, their first, I think it's in their first 28 days they have to send that in. Otherwise, their account would go on hold and the, you know the, an order could be delayed while they were getting a photo sorted out. Um, just kind of inoculating them against failure. So what I mean by that is, you know, it, it does rain in this country, so just they need to be prepared that they will lose a few catalogs, and they will have good pickups and bad pickups. So be prepared for that, and they will come across some grumpy old people. I always say, um, you know, in the words of Jim Rod, there are only nine or ten grumpy old people in the whole world. They move around quite a lot, but if you come across one, you just have to think, oh well, there's only half a dozen more. I can I can cope with that. Um, and just kind of you know be a bit light-hearted. There are grumpy people about, but just you know once you've come across somebody who says they're not interested in the catalogue, cross them off your list, and then you don't need to worry about it. But just preparing them for that just really helps them when they when they're kind of getting started. And make sure they've got the names and the telephone numbers of all of their uplines. So obviously, hopefully, they've got your contact details. But if you're not available, who would they contact? You can obviously give them the number of the the service centre, the help desk. But your upline, if, you, if your upline is a, um, an active upline and is supporting you a lot, then they will be absolutely delighted to support your new team members as well. So make sure that you introduce them and give them the names and numbers of your upline um, so they know who to contact. Um, making sure that people are aware of the local open evenings. Um, it might be a bit harder if you're recruiting people from the other side of the country. You know, you know, I'm down south in England. If I'm, I've got a couple of team members up in Scotland. So it may not be that I'll be going to all the local open evenings with them, but making sure that they're aware. And if you do know somebody at a meeting and you've got somebody coming along, then you can maybe ask them if they would mind you know, meeting up with them and making them feel welcome if you can't get there yourself. But, um, but obviously if you are recruiting locally and you do have a local open evening, then inviting them to that um, and going along with them will just kind of really make them feel welcome. Um, explain the steps to building the first customer base. Obviously, I'm not going to cover that in detail now. There's a separate webinar on on that. But you know, the whole point of going round several times and um, how to go back for stragglers, that sort of thing. So making sure they're aware of all of that. And um, 
And as I said earlier, really, just talk to them regularly. That, that makes such a big difference when their kit arrives, after they've done their first drop, when they do their first pickup, help with placing their first order, all of those sorts of things. So, keeping track. At the beginning, I, I, I talked a little bit about um, asking them what are they looking for out of Clean Easy. When they first joined, did they have an idea of how much they were looking to earn, what they wanted to use that money for, you know, how many hours a week they're able to commit to it? And once you've kind of got an idea of that, and, and you've worked out, uh, there's a like a, a, a tracker that I send everybody. It just explains that on average, if you put this many catalogs out, you will earn approximately this much. And um, based on you know 21% commission or maybe a bit of um, volume profit. So often, if it's kind of 50 pounds a week, I would say to them, you know, make sure you you get your catalogs out. The 250 catalogs, try and get them out at least once a week, and then help them keep track on that. You know, if you've got somebody who joins and says, oh yeah, yeah, I've, I've kind of just lost my job. I really need a couple of hundred pounds a week to help pay the rent. But um, actually, I do a lot of voluntary work, so I've probably only got you know a couple of hours on a Saturday morning to do Clean Easy. Then they're not really going to be able to get the catalogs out to build uh, the level of income that they want. And it's important that they're aware of that, that they're being a bit unrealistic. They either need to find more time, commit more time to it, um, to be able to put X number of catalogs out, 250 catalogs, once or twice or three times a week even, and... Um, or they need to understand that they're not going to earn as much. Because if, you, if you've got someone who's expecting to earn £200 a week, and you say, oh yeah, that'll be fine, don't worry, you'll soon build it up, you know, and in their first few weeks, they're struggling to get an order in once a fortnight, then they're soon going to get despondent and leave. So make sure that you're working with them, they know how many catalogues they need to be putting out, and you can just work with them on that, help them. Did, did you manage to get your 250 catalogues out okay? If not, don't worry, you can always, you know, you don't necessarily need to put them all out on one go. You may find that you can just do 50 catalogues a couple of times a week and then 100 once a week or something like that, depending on their time. So help them to keep track of, of you know, how, how they're doing. And, and that the activities is the important thing to track. Not so much how many orders did you get, how much did you earn, it's how many catalogues did you put out. Focus on those activities that they can control and the results will appear themselves. Um, it's worth explaining the bonus system, especially all the new bonuses now. So the 30-day bonus with um, 25 free catalogues if you get in an order of 125 points or about £150 um, in your first 30 days. So each order they'll get an extra 25 catalogues. If they can get up to 10%, then they get their first cash bonus, which is approximately £50 for them. So um, make sure they're aware of that. You don't want somebody missing out on a bonus just because they didn't realise they had to get an extra £20 worth of orders at the end of the month. Um, and as I said, help them set their first goals. That 30-day challenge is a great one. And it's easier now. Now that they get an extra 25 catalogues each with, with each order, if they can try to get £150 a week in orders, then they're not going to be far away from hitting that 30-day challenge. And then they'll get another 153 catalogues at the end of that as well. So that's a really good thing to aim for. Um, Obviously, the 10% the, the um, bonus is good to go for as well. And the 90-day challenge, this is the... Um, it kind of benefits you in a way, but it depends what you want to do with it. With the um, support and um, what the new bonus is called from head office, um, SSV, support bonus, I can't remember exactly. But basically, um, if your team member hits their 30-day challenge, you get another £50. In their first 90 days, if they can hit 1,500 bonus points in total... Then I think you get another 50 on top of that. If they can get 2,500 bonus points, they get another 100 of that. What I've said to my team members as they join is, I'm just going to pass that on to them because they're going to be doing all the hard work. So if they can get their 30 day challenge as well as the uh, the catalogs that they get, they'll get a 50 pound bonus from me as well. Because um, obviously I'll be benefiting from the, the the volume bonus that I get, volume profit that I get from their their orders anyway. So uh, help them to set those first goals because that would be great for their motivation if they can see themselves achieving achieving targets. Okay, meetings and trainings, these are really, really important both for you and for new team members. So always go to your local meetings and trainings. These webinars are, are great because, you know, I'm sorry, I don't mean great because they're great, but they're, they're great for your team. 
because it allows them to get involved and to meet you and get support from you. And, and it's really easy, half an hour on a Wednesday night, you know, it, it, they don't even need to take their pajamas off, they can watch the, uh, watch the webinar. So, um, and it just shows the importance. If you're going to all the meetings and you're inviting people to uh, all the meetings and you're saying, well, we go to all the meetings because we learn so much, it just shows the importance of them to your team members. I'm a big believer in be the leader you seek. And quite often you're, you're kind of looking for some sort of inspiration from a leader to sort of help you help you feel kind of like you're achieving things. And, and if you're looking for that, for, for that from your leader, then the best way to do that is to give inspiration to your team by rewarding them and recognizing them and organizing things for them, little sizzles and things to get together and, 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 and kind of congratulating people and so on. Okay, I talked a bit about a checklist earlier. I'm not going to go through all of these things now, but I, I just think the, the practice of keeping a list of things that you do with a new starter when they've started is a great way of doing it, rather than trying to remember everything that you want to do. So um, have a little look through this. These are the sorts of things that I send to my new team members. So I can I make sure, obviously, that I know all of their, their personal details, their uh, name and address and things, so I can um, send to them. Um, I know... I mean, I've said there how many catalogues have they started off with. Everyone starts with 250 now, but making sure you know what they want out of Clean Easy, as I said earlier. Um, I, I have an email group that I so I send emails to my team. You want you might want to set something similar up. Um, I always you know have their contact details in my phone. Um, I send them a welcome email. I send send them a welcome letter. You can kind of see the other things there. I'm not suggesting you need to do all of these things, but just just have a list. So that when a new person starts, you can just go through the list and just tick them off over the first few days as you go through that. Okay, um, related to supporting your team, but more specifically about um, managing your own business. Um, your personal sales group is, is really important because it, it's if you're a measure of how successful you're being in growing your business. So every period... What you should be looking to do is how many is just keep track of how many active distributors have you got. And by active distributors, I just mean somebody who's put in an order during that period. And obviously, what you're hoping to do is to see this grow. So if you're getting more active distributors, and um, also how many new distributors have you brought into the business each period? So you should be having goals if you're trying to grow your business. And um, you know, I believe you probably need to be looking to bring one person a week in to bring build your business. Not that, you, you know, if, if you brought one person a week in and they all stayed, you know, by the end of a year you'd have a huge business. But the fact is that not all of them will stay. So if you're only bringing in one person every three or four months and then, you know, you're losing one person every sort of three or four months, then, you, you know, your business is going to stay fairly flat. And um, it's worth just thinking to yourself, how many of my guys are serious distributors? So these are the people who are actively team building, who are, Sort of building their customer base or have already got a customer base um, and they're always learning they're coming to the local meetings and so on because that's a really good measure of, of how, how successful your business is likely to be um, and just I, I always like to keep track of what, what were your sales the, 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 the total bulk orders if you like of your PFG because again that's a measure of how much is business are you actually doing it's all very well bringing in some distributors and supporting them but if nobody's actually putting the order the, the catalogues out and putting the orders through, then nobody's earning any money from their business. Um, another Jim Rohn quote there, what you should be looking to achieve is measurable improvement in reasonable time. So, so I, I'm a big believer in you know having something that you can measure. If you can keep track of how things are going each month and you can see that you're progressing, then it's really good for your motivation. And um, it just needs to be a reasonable time. We're not in a race. You know, you, you will have your own goals and, and targets that you're meeting. You don't have to achieve the same as everybody else. You can achieve whatever is important to you. And as long as you can see that you're improving and it's in a reasonable amount of time for your lifestyle, then you, know, you, you don't want to ask any more of yourself. Okay, quick question for everybody then. See who was awake. How many serious people do you think you should be aiming to get in your team? Oh, I'm Andrew and Andrew on the ball. Ash, five, yeah. Craigie, I'm Andrew and Andrew. You'd answered the question before I'd finished asking it, yeah? Excellent, yeah. Lots from, from Adele, yeah. I like a girl with a bit of ambition. 
you should get married, Adele. There'll be some uh, young man somewhere out there who could do a lot worse than you. I hope that came out right. Um, hi, right, yes. Five serious people will build you a, a SED. Yeah, absolutely, Susan. Yeah, we all have to start somewhere. You can't get to five without finding one first. So that's, that's very true. But if you can get to five, then you know you're you're on your way to a very successful business. Okay. Uh, when you're starting a new person, how often should you call them in their first week or so? Yeah, Amanda and Andrew daily. Yeah, good, good. Glad everybody was awake there. So yeah, I believe you should speak to them every day at the beginning, and you'll soon start to find some people were a, a kind of you know pretty independent fairly quickly. They they don't need you to call them so often after the first few weeks once they're up and running. Other people kind of like to have a chat, just letting you know what's going on, keeping in touch. And um, so it's you know it's entirely up to you um, how you do it. But I believe. Lots at the beginning, and then you'll kind of work out something between you and your your new team member as they become more independent. Um, but yep, yeah, I always go aim to speak to somebody every day in their first week. Okay, so just wrapping it up now. Uh, where are we? Yep, yeah, coming towards nine o'clock. So um, basically, what we covered is understanding the numbers. What I mean by that is. Um, Although we talk about five serious people, you will need to bring lots more people in to find those five serious ones. So the more people you bring in, the, the better. And if people leave, then don't beat yourself up about it. Just feel, as long as you feel that you've supported them to the best of your ability, um, people will leave anyway, but uh, as long as they don't leave because they felt they weren't getting supported. And um, talked a bit about you know what to do in their first seven days. Uh, we covered anticipating those early problems, sort of sorting those out quickly, uh, inoculating them against kind of grumpy old people, that sort of thing. Um, helping them keep track, so make sure they know what they're aiming for each week and have they achieved it. Um, trying to get them along to their first meeting, welcoming them there, and then having that little checklist I think is really, really useful. So that's the end of this training webinar. That was number five. Next week we're covering... Uh, number six, which is all about, I've said there, build your business. I think I've changed it slightly to grow yourself to grow your business. But um, that's what we'll be covering next week. Um, and I mentioned earlier that these are all recorded. So if there's anything on here that you just wanted to go over again, or if you felt one of the other seven webinars would be more useful to you at the moment, or to a, a team member, then they're all on YouTube. If you just go onto YouTube there, uh, you can find them, uh, just do a search on Chris Smith, Clean Easy, and you'll find them there. That Hopefully the title's fairly obvious. It's Clean Easy Webinar number one, and then the title, that sort of thing. Right, I'm going to stop the recording now. So.